In this video, I'm gonna show you how to read aviation METARs and TAFs like an absolute pro. We're gonna use some real life examples, break them down, we're gonna read them together. And by the end of this video, you're gonna be doing weather briefings, reading METARs and TAFs like an absolute stud. Let's go. Now the difference between a METAR and a TAF is a METAR is almost like a snapshot of what's actually going on at the airport at that time, whereas a TAF is a forecast. It's gonna give you an estimate, pretty good guess of what to expect at different times during a certain time frame at that airport in the future. So a TAF is a forecast and a METAR is a snapshot of the airport at that time. All right, this first METAR looks like a whole bunch of jumbled numbers, but we're going to break it down so it's nice and simple. So the first part here is the airport identifier, CYYC. That's Calgary International Airport, by the way, up here in Alberta, Canada. The next part is the issuing time. So 04 stands for the day of the month. It's the fourth day of this month, which is November, and then this Next set of numbers here is the time, 1800 Zulu. This part after here, 280, is the winds. That's gonna show us what direction it's coming from, from a heading of 280, and it's blowing at 15, gusting 25 knots. After that, we have the visibility, 15 statute miles. BKN 050, that means the clouds are broken at 5,000 feet. That 050 stands for 5,000 feet, just add two zeros to the end of it. The next part is the temperature, 10 degrees Celsius with a dew point of minus two. After that, we have our altimeter setting, altimeter 29092, and then there's a little remark section here that shows us the sea level pressure uh, in millibars, but you add 1013.4, so you add a one zero before the 134. Now let's take a look at another example. We're gonna actually use the home base airport where I fly out of primarily. The identifier is Charlie Yankee Bravo Whiskey, CYBW. Our time that the METAR was issued is on the fourth day of the month at 1330 Zulu. We then have our wind speeds. The winds are coming from 150 degrees at six knots. Notice how it's different from the last METAR where it showed there was a gust factor in there. There's no gust factor here. And we have low visibility, one half statute miles, not to be confused by one or maybe two statute miles. No, this, if it has a slash, it's half. So half statute miles, it's basically down to minimums. And BR is an acronym for MIST. And there's gonna be lots of different kind of acronyms when you look at METARs and TAFs. So you wanna kind of, you know, make sure you get familiar with them. And if you don't know, you can always look them up. But over time, you start to just remember. So BR is MIST. And we're gonna see an overcast layer of cloud here. This is where we're gonna see all the different cloud layers. Overcast at 004. That means 400 feet. Remember, add two zeros at the end of the four. So 400 feet. So pretty low ceilings, low visibility. And then we have our temperatures. We have uh, two degrees is the temperature and a dew point of one degree. So a very small dew point spread, which would probably explain the lower visibility. We've got low clouds, so definitely an IFR airport. And uh, altimeter setting of 2988. Marks here with the ST8, gives us a little more details to the breakdown of the clouds. There's stratus clouds covering eight eighth of the sky, which would be overcast. All right, let's look at another example, but this is gonna be for a more mountainous airport, a place called Cranbrook in British Columbia, Canada. And if we take a look here, we got the airport identifier, CYXC, that's for Cranbrook. The issuing time of this METAR is fourth day of the month at 1500 Zulu. Uh, we have winds at 230 degrees at eight knots. And we also have some low visibility at this airport, three quarter statute miles and that's probably due to light snow. That's what this minus SN, if it had just SN, that'd be like moderate snow. If it had a plus, it'd mean heavy snow, but we have light snow and we have an overcast layer of clouds. OVC is overcast at 300 feet. Remember, just add two zeros to that. So pretty low IFR conditions here. We have a temperature of minus zero one. That's what the M stands for, minus minus one degree Celsius, with the dew point of minus three. So again, a fairly low dew point spread. And we have an altimeter setting of 2978. And then this remarks here gives us more details on the clouds. So the remarks here says SN8, that's stratonimbus clouds at eight eighths of the sky. So eight out of eight of the sky is stratonimbus, which coincides with the overcast uh, layer of clouds here. 
All right, now unlike a METAR, a TAF is a forecast predicting what the weather conditions might be at that particular airport at specific times. And they can be very complex or they can be very simple depending on what kind of weather is going to be expected. So let's do a little look at, uh, let's do Calgary International Airport here. So we got Calgary International Airport and this is what it looks like. So we have the airport identifier, just like the METAR, CYYC. We have the issuing time the fourth day of the month at 1740 Zulu. And the second part is not the winds like you see in the METAR, but a validity period for this TAF. And it goes like this. So the 04 is the day of the month at 1800 Zulu. And the TAF is valid until the fifth day of the month at 2400 Zulu. Next, we have some general weather information for this TAF. Winds are gonna be at 260 degrees. 25 gusting 45 knots. That's pretty spicy. We have P6SM. This is the visibility. This means plus six statute miles. So the visibility is gonna be better than six knots, blah, better than six statute miles. And then we have some description of the clouds. Broken cloud layer at 4,000 feet. And then this is where we get into more of the forecasted stuff. So here we have this. It says tempo. This means temporarily between 1800 Zulu and 2200 Zulu, we're expecting the following. Four statute miles visibility, so a little bit reduced visibility, light showering rain. Minus, remember, means light, SH means showers, and RA means rain. We have broken layer of cloud at 2000 feet. We also have this next bit of forecast here. So from, that's what FM stands for, from 04, so fourth day of the month, 2200 Zulu, we are expecting the winds to start dying down. Check this out. From 280 degrees, we're gonna have winds 20 gusting 35. So a little bit better from 25 gusting 45, but we're gonna have to wait a little bit later until we see that, uh, that decrease in wind speed. We're gonna have plus six statute miles visibility, and we're gonna have a cloud layer of scattered clouds at 3000 feet. Now, if we go a little bit further into the future, we also have another part of this TAF, another from segment here. So this is gonna say from the fifth day of the month at 0200 Zulu, we are going to have even more reduced winds. The winds are improving. They're gonna change direction a little bit from 300 degrees. They're only gonna be blowing at 15 knots. We're gonna have good visibility, plus six statute miles and clouds, few clouds at 4,000 feet. So you can see if you take a look at this, it gives you kind of a step-by-step -step as to what you're gonna be expecting. You can't rely 100% on what a TAF is telling you. The METAR is real time, or not real time, but it's a snapshot of what the airport is at that issuing time. So when you look at a TAF, you're kind of getting a little bit of a forecast, but you can't rely on it fully, but it kind of gives you a timeline. So we're, if we were to like take a look at this one specific, you can see that we're gonna have some gusty wind conditions. We're gonna have decent visibility. The ceiling's only at 4,000 feet, but then we're gonna have some temporary showers in there. The clouds are gonna come down to about 2,000, and then it's gonna start to improve from there. We're gonna get reduced winds. The visibility is gonna improve, and the clouds are gonna start coming up until the last part of this TAF where it says few at 4,000 feet, we're gonna have less wind and the clouds are gonna start to dissipate. It's gonna become a beautiful day to hit the beach. All right, let's take a look at another example. We're gonna use the same airport and see if we can break this TAF down as well. So it's at CYYC, so it's, this uh, TAF is for Calgary International Airport. The issuing time, fourth day of the month at 1740 Zulu. The validity period of this TAF is the fourth day of the month at 1800 Zulu until the fifth day of the month at 2400 Zulu. Then we have the winds. Winds are gonna be 290 degrees at 15 gusting 25 knots, not as crazy as that last half. And we're gonna have good visibility plus six statute miles visibility. And the cloud layers are gonna be a broken 5,000 feet. But we have a tempo in here. This is, a, this is gonna show us a little bit more of what's about to happen. So uh, we have a tempo issued here between 20 Zulu and 2300 Zulu. 
So this is right after this is being issued pretty much, or a few hours after this TAF comes out. And we're gonna have reduced visibility for statute miles. We're gonna have light showering rain, kind of like the, the other TAF that we looked at. And we're gonna have the clouds coming down, broken layer of clouds at 2,500 feet. So if you're planning to fly VFR, you probably, if, you probably wanna reconsider because if you're gonna be landing within this time frame, you might be in the clouds or unless you can descend uh, far enough. Uh, okay, and then we have a from uh, 0 05, so fifth day of the month at 0000, zero, zero, zero Zulu. We are gonna have winds at 310 at 10 knots, so reduced wind speed plus six statute miles and scattered clouds at 4,000 feet. So kind of like the last half, we have some gusty wind conditions, the clouds kind of come in again and uh, we get a little bit more rain and then it starts to improve. And what I recommend is you practice reading these in their actual raw data format because over time I find it's actually faster than getting the translated version. Because you have to read the translated part, you gotta go line by line and it kind of breaks it down to normal language where when you get really good at reading TAFs and METARs, you just read the raw data and you get a very good mental picture of what's actually gonna go on and it's it takes up a lot less space, a lot less to read because it's all abbreviated. So there you go, everybody. There's a couple METARs and TAFs that we kind of broke down. Practice makes perfect, everybody. Once you start doing these over and over again, they become so easy to read that you just kind of look at them and you don't even have to really think much. It's probably the easiest part of your weather briefing is reading METARs and TAFs, but they provide very critical information. Also, if you haven't tried out the Garmin Pilot app, this is a great time to switch. Absolutely phenomenal, lots of good features. We, you already know Garmin makes exceptional products and uh, this is just one extra thing that you can add to your flight bag to make all of your flying safer and a lot more enjoyable and a lot easier and a lot more fun. If you have any questions, leave them down in the comment section down below. Don't forget to like and subscribe and we'll see you on the next adventure, everybody. Bye-bye. Thanks for watching everybody. Hope you enjoyed this video. Don't forget to like and subscribe. And as always, if you're new to the channel, welcome aboard. A little cheers to all the new viewers. And if you're curious on what it's like to become a pilot, what the process is, how to get your first aviation job, then I've got videos on my channel that you can check out to help get you started. Absolutely love and appreciate all the support everybody. So we'll catch you on the next adventure. Happy and safe flying everybody. Cheers.